Hi hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank. And did you know that arrays are just constant pointers? It's true, and I'm going to show you why and what that means and some stupid pointer tricks you can use um, with arrays or with array notation. Okay, so let's go ahead and dig into it. So, you know, you take a look at an array, okay, um, say an array of integers that we've initialized to hold some values. Okay, it doesn't matter what they are, say eight, six, seven, five. Okay, now what happens if you try to display the contents of the array by simply doing C out A? Right, we learned earlier on that you can't display the contents of an array this way, you have to display the contents element by element. But what happens if you do? What do you, what do you get? Okay, um, what you get is a hexadecimal address. All right, so it's a memory address. So what, what are pointers? They're simply variables that hold memory addresses, right? So if I was to create um, another integer variable, right, let's call it B, assign that, initialize that with some value, I don't know, three, okay? And then I was to create another pointer, and we'll call it uh, P, and we'll assign it the memory address of B, and if I was to see out P, what would you see, right? Well, you would see another hexadecimal memory address, right? So pointers are just variables that hold memory addresses, right? Pointers are variables that hold memory addresses. And so as we can see from our C out statements, both P and A are variables that hold memory addresses. The difference is, <clears throat> is that you can't change what A is storing, okay? So you can't change what it's pointing at. I can't do something like A equals um, ampersand B, right? You got the little red squiggle there. It's not gonna compile. Why not? Because an array is a constant pointer. It means it can't change. Once it's initialized, it can't ever change. So the memory address inside of A can never change. It's assigned the memory address of the first byte of the first element of the array. Okay, so you can't change it. It's constant. You know, we can certainly change P. Right? As a matter of fact, I could assign to P A. So what did I do here? I just took the memory address that was in A and assigned it to P. So now, if I were to print out the contents of A and P, they're gonna be the same, right? Why? Because pointers are just variables that hold memory addresses. And so because of that, I can assign one to the other. A is constant, since P is not, right? So. This works, okay, this would not, okay, doesn't work because A is constant, all right? Even though you don't have that keyword there, it's still constant, it's just implicitly constant, okay? But you can assign an array to P. Now, you know, an array to a pointer, now, you already know how you can access individual elements of an array, right? So I could do something like C out A of one. Okay, so let's let's do that. What are we gonna see on the screen? We're gonna see uh, six, right? So there you go. All right. Now, if A is a pointer and P is a pointer and I can use a subscript with a pointer A, then doesn't it stand to reason that I can use a subscript with pointer P? Because remember, A and P both have the same value in them, the same memory address in them, because of line 16. So it should work, shouldn't it? And in fact, it does, okay? Now, one last thing to show you. Okay, you can dereference pointers, can't you? 
So for example, I could do star P, right? Now what's that gonna do? It's gonna go to the memory location whose address is in P and retrieve that value. Okay, so whose memory address is in P? Okay, by the time line 25 um, executes. Well, it's gonna have the memory address of that first byte of the first element, right? So what memory location am I going to? I'm going to the memory location of the first element in the A array. So if I see out star P, what am I gonna see? I am going to see eight, right? Because that's the first element of the array. Now, since A and P both contain the same memory address, then I should be able to dereference A in the same way. Why? Because it's a pointer. Granted, it's a constant pointer, but it's still a pointer. It's a variable that holds the memory address. Memory address of what? The first byte of the first element of array A. Okay, so they both contain the same address, P and A, because of this statement right there. All right, so let's take this a step further. Okay, what if I was to uh, do something like this, A plus zero, right? Well, what I'm doing is I am taking the contents of A, which is the memory address, and I'm adding nothing to it. So what's the result of that going to be? It's going to be memory address that is an A, right? So I want to be dereferencing that first element just like before. Okay. So what happens if I was to do this and provide a zero subscript instead, right? That's something that you're a little bit more used to. Okay. Now, if I do that, I'm going to get the same result. I'm going to be accessing the first element. Okay, so maybe you can see the pattern. Now, if this is true, if in line 29, using zero as a subscript gets me the first element, right? And then on line 28, adding zero to the memory address that's in pointer A gets me the first element, then shouldn't it logically follow that this should be the same? Right, that gets me, this is gonna get me the second element of array A. So shouldn't the pattern hold? And the long, long of it is, make a long story short, it does, all right? So you can do that for the first element, you can do that for the second element, the third element, and so on, okay? So we did that with the array pointer, right? We did that with A right there. But remember, we assigned the contents of A to P. So P's got the same value in it that A does. So we can do the exact same thing with P. Because why? Because they're both pointers, right? P is what you normally think of as a pointer, which is easiest to think of as a pointer. A is an array, but it's also a pointer. It's a constant pointer. They're both variables that hold memory addresses. Now we can take this a step further and we can do one more ridiculous thing. Okay. And that is, you know, if we can, you know, use whatever value in here as a subscript, then we can replace that with a variable too, an integer, okay? So you've seen this, right, in for loops. So let's let's take a look at it. Let's finish up by taking a look at this, all right? So you can do something like this. For int i equals zero, i less than four, i plus plus, because we have four elements in our array, right? So we can easily do something like this. We can say, see out a of i. Okay, and this is nothing new. I've seen this before, but based off of what we just talked about, the pattern we just talked about, it should follow easily enough that this will work as well, right? And guess what? It does, all right? And we can 
and sine two p, the contents of a again. So now both p and a are pointing to the exact same thing because of line twelve, and we can do this. Okay, we can use the p pointer instead of the a pointer, and it's going to work just the same. All right. So the bottom line is that arrays are pointers; they're constant pointers, but they're pointers nonetheless and that fact was hidden from you by having array notation being what you learned about first and maybe making it a little bit easier to use than the pointer notation which i just showed you how to use with arrays okay so that's going to bring this video to a close if you're a student of mine you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video feel free to drop me an email stop by my office hours or hit me up on zoom online for the rest of you if you thought the video was useful please consider giving a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked you got the thumbs down button as well consider supporting the channel in various ways you can subscribe you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents leave a comment whatever but most of all thanks for watching and we'll see you next time